Lovely. Then I will go. I bought a car. They sell these spindles in square, inch and three quarter square, and round the stock, inch and three quarter. However, two inch schedule uh, 80 pipe, it's actually measured a uh, little bit more than inch and three quarter, so it has to be shimmed. So what I chose, I chose to go with the square stock and then uh, machine it down to fit perfectly in the pipe. I bought this from Northern Tools. We're gonna make sure we're gonna use proper welding techniques. set the dial indicator so I could cut both the spindle to the same depth. I left 3 8 of inch over here to weld. Schedule 82 inch pipe, it uh, measure on average 1.940. This is what I cut this to. It's hard fit, but I'm gonna press it in. This is piece of that pipe that I'm gonna use it as a spindle or axle. I cut another piece of pipe, I'm going to put it here and use it to press the spindle into the axle. I also deburred it a little bit on the edge.
I clamped it together. I made sure it level to each other. I shimmed over there on the drum and got it the right uh, on the right plane with this one. It measured the width of it uh, 61 and an eighth. That will give me a clearance inside about 60 and 9 16 16 and 5 8 that will be enough to lay 11 uh, 2 by 6 4 which they measure five and a half five seven sixteen so i don't have to cut any board uh, i also measure it in this dimension diagonally uh, 113 and 9 16 from corner to corner so it's laying out perfect right now i'm gonna go ahead and tack it I did uh, groove all the surfaces where the weld gonna go, so when I grind it, be perfectly flat, and the board will sit perfect. Ready to go. I welded up the corners, still good. I took measurement, all directions still good, still flat. I tacked it a few times all the way around, wait for the tacks to cool down, then uh, gave it uh, one bass here on the opposite side, did that, then came back and weld this, and still good. Everything tagged. I'm still have to cut two by two. One go here and one go here. You always want to mount your axles 60 plus percent from the front of your trailer to the axle. Uh, this way your trailer has less chance of swaying if you're driving on high speed This trailer over here. I'm building just for the farm. It's not gonna go on highway I'm not gonna put lights or anything to it. I'm using it right now. The main purpose uh, I'm building it is to water some uh, plants I plant over there I'm gonna put tote on it. However in the future I'm gonna use it to put welder or carry wood or something like this Usually when you build a trailer, you want to be, uh, design your trailer to be closer to the ground. So if you carry something or you drive four-wheeler or something, it will be close and you could load it and unload it easier. However, this trailer, I want to build it higher of the ground uh, for several reasons. Uh, if I was build it closer to the ground, I wouldn't put this angle here because the axle going to hit it. The axle will be mounted here in this case. However, for this purpose, I'm going to mount the axle over here. And that's going to give me more distance between the spring and this angle. Having this angle here will give me more strength to the floor of the trailer. Because usually when you carry something small and heavy, you're going to carry it in this area. Not on the center of the axle, but in this area to split the weight between the tongue and the axle. Or your tires. So... This over here right now is very rigid, especially I'm going to put 2x2 two two over here. This will add to the strength of the floor and 2x2 two two over here. The measurement I have for this trailer, like I said earlier, I built it to have 60 and a half, a little bit more than 60 and a half. It's about 60 and 9, 16, 5, 8, something like that. So I could put 11 2x6 uh, boards. I don't have to cut any of them. It's 8 foot in length. These over here, they're 5 foot long because the piece I used to have, it's uh, 10 foot, so I cut it in half and that's how I welded it. Right now, I have 40 inch from here to the center of the tongue. I have 22 inches from here to here. 60% uh, it's going to be 57.6, so I got it to the closest integer and that gave me 58 inches to the center of the axle. 
and then when I'm well the two by two is the this is 34 inches I have 34 inches from here to this surface and 34 inches from here to this surface so that's gonna get if I'm on the angle at 17 inches and it's two by two to the center 17 inches to the center that's gonna give me 16 inches and 16 inches on each side and that's gonna make it very strong and lightweight trailer I'm also gonna build a side to it and I'm gonna make it about two foot high so later on if I want to carry dirt or something I could mount plywood and I could load it with uh, with dirt and move it around uh, one thing to note when you buy stuff from northern or uh, online I bought these from northern and I have to go through like 10 of them to find two a close in size to each other you need to pay attention to this make sure you have two matching axles lengthwise they the same right now height wise they the same but if you notice the bolt not gonna not lined up together and that's gonna make the axle mount crooked on the trailer frame so the trailer gonna go this way or gonna go this way you'll have major problem if you have tandem axle if the axle is not parallel to each other then the tires gonna wear out prematurely now when I was uh, checking the springs these springs they will line up this way that's the closest I found over there so be careful when you buy spring make sure you get a pair that perfectly match this piece over here is going to go in the front it's four inches more the width of the trailer frame because the angle will stick out so this is 60 65 inches square and everything and I'm gonna install it here in the front one tip I rounded this over here because the inside of the angle is not a sharp corner it's kind of rounded so I run this so it will fit perfectly make holding easier I also left 19 inches from the center of the axle to here and 19 inches to the other side it will give me plenty room to install the fender for the tire later on I will include all the dimensions of all the pieces all the measurement I'm taking is from this corner over here from the front so I went back 17 and 3 8 to this corner and then 22 inches to this surface 35 inches and 3 8 and to this right here is 42 inches the axle gonna be at 57 inches I kinda changed my mind I want it to be in the center over here but I pushed it forward one inch this way uh, when I use bolts and nuts to hold the boards on this angle I could reach them easy I don't have to you know go in an angle so really it doesn't make big difference and then this surface is 58 inches 69 and a half to this side 76 and of course the last piece is gonna be 8 foot to here another thing I did different than what I originally thought of doing I thought to cut these pieces over here uh, 26 inches 
that will give me a 24 inches about 24 inches uh, a clearance over here so I could mount plywood if I want to haul uh, dirt or wood firewood or something like that but then I thought about it it's kind of look tall and uh, I have to buy two plywoods treated plywood if I want to do that and they're gonna be waste so instead I cut these 18 inches that's gonna give me 16 inches a clearance over here and I could uh, buy two by four uh, two foot uh, four foot by eight foot plywood and I could cut it into three pieces 16 16 16 and I could use uh, two for the side and then I have to cut one in length and put it in the front so these over here they cut to 18 inches and I have to notch this one over here to go around the angle and then the piece in the front I have to cut it 13 inches Tomorrow I'm going to bring with me some material, I have some extra material at the shop and I'm going to put some expanded metal over here and build like small toolbox so I could put small item here in the front of the trailer. I still have to weld it all the way, I only tacked it and cleaned it, everything still have to be welded. Another tip when I welded this hanker over here for the uh, spring I made it to flush to the outside this other piece to make it perfectly lined up with the front I have to go back 5 16th of inch this over here it's uh, inch and three quarter outside to outside this one it's little bit over inch and three quarter so the spring will fit easy uh, inside to inside I'm gonna cut this to continue this over here and then I'm gonna cut all of these to match this back piece I check uh, for you know cross check it everything good everything perfect it's still good this way too and it's still level and I'm gonna finish it tomorrow I'm ready to weld these on the axle. I uh, got them center to these. They both match. I went back one inch from this face and I'm ready to tack it and weld it. I also decided to build a small box, like toolbox in the front of it. So I bent this piece of expanded metal. I wish I have more of this material. I have different material I'm gonna use for the box, but it's gonna work just fine. I cut piece of two by three and weld it here to add strength to these arms. And this piece measures 16 inches, but I bend three inches down. So now it's 13 inch and two inch, it's 15 inch. It's gonna be a 15 inch box. 
I also welded a piece over here also to add string and it won't allow these pieces to flex which that would break the weld and break the angle I did cut gussets on all the sharp corners I was about to cut one here but then I thought about it I'm just gonna drill hole over here and put shackle or something I'm gonna cut some uh, two by two angle two inch long and I'm gonna weld them over here use them to uh, as you know to hook straps or something to them like I said I did gusset all the pieces I'm also gonna cut and weld piece of that uh, one inch by quarter inch thick over here uh, this is very strong now I built some weld over here but I'm gonna weld this piece over here so this will never bend I also thought about it I'm gonna build it build the bottom of it to make it highway ready but I'm not gonna run any wire or anything so I'm gonna weld an angle over here like this to put the three LEDs for the bottom of it It's been six days since it ran on it. It's got some light rust. I'm gonna hit it with the wire brush. This one over here, the shackle's gonna go like this and they're gonna attach to the spring. They're gonna be riding on this 316 thick metal and this little service is going to be the bushing so it's going to wear out the bolt and the bracket over here prematurely I find this at my shop it's half inch pipe and I drilled it a little bit made it a little bit bigger I made it 916 uh, ID and the bolt for the spring will fit it perfectly now so I'm going to cut two of them and I'm going to weld it over here and fill it with the grease so the bolt will ride this will act as bushing this one over here the bolt will go all the way and the spring will be uh, act like bushing because it has a plastic bushing I picked it up with the tractor, removed all the barrels and everything underneath it and we lowered it down and then I picked it up from here and got it like this, got it on its side and then I removed the chain to this side over here so to make it safe and get the bucket higher a little bit and now I'm gonna weld everything facing up and then I'm gonna flip it and do the other side then set it straight and weld everything on the floor based on this material that I have I cut this piece 16 inch by 15 inch this one over here 15 and 5 8 by 17 and 5 8 
this one over here the 21 and 58 by 17 and 58 and this one matching the other side I just tagged them together and grinded them to hold them in position and then I cut these pieces I'm gonna weld them as contour to it and then I'm gonna weld piece on top so this one cut it's about 16 gauge the frame is completely finished I grind it all the way I added inch and a half by 316 and it's uh, inch and a half over here I put 2 by 6 here and I welded this all the way around even in the front I also added these bushings finish the box it's kind of deep but I could store a lot of stuff in it I also added support over here so this act as support for this angle and also in the future if I want to put it on the highway I want the LED over here the three LED required by the DOT I put the second bass on it and I put the second bass here and I primed it I have plenty of room if I want to install the axle on the top of the springs but that's gonna make the trailer sit low so I want the trailer now to be higher than the ground so I'm gonna put the axle underneath the spring but in future if I decide to change it and make it low to the ground or road I put the axle on top Since I start building this trailer, it seems like it rained every other day. So I'm trying to rush it and get it done. It looks like it fixed the rain today. While I was working on this trailer, a guy I made the offer on this backhoe and this long trailer. He accepted my offer and he called me. It was 81 miles away. The trailer in bad shape. It also set for 12 years. I'm ready to install the hubs. I cleaned the spindle real good. Cleaned the hub real good. I'm gonna back the uh, bearings with the grease. I'm gonna put the big bearing in, then I'm gonna put the seal in. And I'm gonna install them. Then the small bearing go in. 
a washer, the lock nut go in. I'll tie it all the way in hard and then lose it about quarter turn. And with the wheel installed on the hub, you should have about less than 16th blade with the wheel or about one to one and a half millimeter this way, no more. If it's too tight, the wheel gonna get hot and gonna spit the grease out. If it's too loose, it's gonna prematurely wear the bearing or wear the spindle. Take the bearings with the grease and the seal will go this way. The seal will prevent the grease from coming out and the Y bar will prevent dust and debris from going in. I coated the bearing with the grease. I coated all the surface with the grease. However, I maintain some air room. You need to maintain air room inside. You don't want to fill it 100% of the grease or it will get hot and it will uh, uh, either it will pop the cover over here and spit all the grease out or it will damage the cell. Uh, I install the bearing, install the flat washer, the lock nut. I will tide it with one hand all the way until it stop. This will ensure only minimum amount of grease left between the ball bearing and the race on both bearings. It will also ensure everything is seated correctly. Then I will go about a quarter turn, 90 degree, and this will give me a proper preset. Then I will install the wheel and just make sure there is little play side to side or this way about 1 16th to about one and a half millimeter and uh, this will ensure proper preload on the bearing. It's good idea the first time you drive with the trailer to stop after three miles or three, four kilometers, something like that and touch the hub, make sure it's not too hot. If it's get too hot, that means the nut is too tight. You need to lose it just a little bit. However, like I said, just hand tight it all the way until it stop, and then lose it quarter turn. That should be good enough. And you double check when you install the wheel, wiggle it side to side. If you have about 1 16th or one and a half millimeter, then you're good to go. I install the wheel and I adjust it a little bit. It may not be a 16th or one and a half millimeter. It's more like 20 thousands play on this side over here, but just little tiny play. You barely feel it. This will allow smooth operation and prevent the wheel from heating. And now, I'm going to install the cutter bin and the cover. You could use socket or something to go around this lip and hammer it in. Make sure it's straight. In my case, I have this piece of pipe. It will fit perfectly on this. running free and quiet one thing I probably forgot to mention make sure everything clean you don't want any dust or debris to get on the bearing because that will damage them and once again I have very minimum play over here maybe 10 to 15 thousand if you go one more notch on the lock nut it's gonna start rocking it's make uh, rocking noise so I went back. I always tied it like this. I just have very little minor play. You barely feel it. Same thing on the other side.
took the wheel out cleaned it real good now I'm gonna paint it with uh, regular paint because this is only primer so far I'm gonna spray paint it to prevent rust all the wood installed I use this bolt and not on the other side I cut this piece over here to go like this on the end and then I'm gonna bolt it to the through the wood to the angle and this way uh, one thing to note I took the dimension, the inside dimension, based on 11 piece, five and a half inch wide. The two by six, it should measure inch and a half by five and a half. However, I bought these from Home Depot. Uh, they actually, they not uh, perfect. Some of them inch and five eight, some of them inch and a half. Uh, width wise, some of them five and a half, some of them. Uh, five and five eight some of them uh, uh, five and eleven sixteen so I had to cut this piece I have to uh, cut probably five eight to get it in but it's all in I'm gonna install this piece over here and then I'm gonna paint the wood I had the wood over here for a couple weeks uh, so it will dry a little bit it's treated wood if you paint over uh, treated wood the paint will come off however it's dry enough right now uh, the paint should stick to it I'm not gonna install fenders now in the future when I convert it to highway trailer I'm gonna put the axle on the top of the springs and that's gonna bring the tire up then I'm gonna build a fender for them I have good inch and a half clearance over here the box over here it's very deep and it will take a lot of stuff I could even put spare tire in it if I choose to I finished building this trailer about six months ago it's very reliable I filled this tote with water it's more than a metric ton and uh, we water trees and drive between trees and what's not uh, the only thing it's needed to make it highway trailer is to add fenders and lights for the uh, drive and for the brake and also a license plate and a gate very simple you could just put hinges and uh, put gate if you need one but this being very reliable trailer the frame is very strong uh, we carry the tote 
and we also put some time filterizer over here about two or three hundred pound in addition to the tote and uh, it's been very good I'm gonna drive it around